Hey everybody, we're going to talk Newton's third law of motion. Uh, so these are color coded to make taking notes a little bit easier. If it's blue, write it down, and if it's not blue, then you can choose whether or not to write it down. So if you see something in there that's beneficial, feel free to write it. Uh, so just a quick reminder um, to an accelerate an object. If an object is accelerating, its motion is changing, something must be pushing or pulling the object to make that happen. All right, so some examples. Try this one out at your desk. Apply a small amount of force to the desk by slapping it gently. And then apply a lot of force to the desk by slapping, slapping the desk harder. Kind of like what you see in the GIF up there. Now did the slaps feel different? And if the force is being applied to the desk, then why was your hand even affected at all? Here's another example. You're in a swimming pool. To start swimming, you push off the side wall with your feet. Now you've applied a force to the wall, but if the force applied is to the wall, then why did you accelerate? How about this one? So it's similar to the swimming pool example. You're standing on a skateboard next to a wall and you push on the wall. You've applied a force to the wall. So if the wall is the object getting the force, then why are you accelerating? And one more for you. We have a student here pulling on a rope, sitting in a rolling chair. So the student is applying a pull, a force, to the rope, but the student is accelerating. Why did the student accelerate if the student is pulling on the rope? So in every example that we just looked at, objects were interacting. Inter means between, so interacting means two objects are acting on each other. So for an example, reach out and just touch your computer, the keyboard or the monitor or whatever, and answer this question, did you touch it first or did it touch you first? And the answer to that question is neither. Both touches happened simultaneously. You reached out and touched the computer. The computer in turn touched you. That though, Both those touches happened at the same time. So all of the interactions that we just saw in the examples all happened simultaneously. Both objects touched each other at the same time. Now, can you think of any example of any forces resulting from only a single object that is not interacting with any other object? I'll give you a second. All right, well, the answer is you can't because it's a trick question. Forces always come in pairs between two interacting objects. So interactions cause force pairs. So if an object applies a force to a second object, that second object applies a force right back on the first object. So in the picture there, we can see the force of the finger pushing on the wall, and the wall is actually pushing back on the finger with the, with the force as well. Now, how do those two forces compare, though? So we're going to take a look at a smart cart collisions video. It was an experiment done in class, and there are two smart carts that are going to be colliding with each other. Now, each cart has a sensor that records how much force is applied to each cart. And there are two graphs that will be on the screen at the same time. Um, the upper graph will correspond to the left cart, and the lower graph will correspond to the right cart. And those graphs show the reading from the force sensor at any given moment. So pay real close attention to what those graphs look like when you're watching this video clip.
Now, while you were watching that, what did you notice? Well, no matter what happened, both graphs always registered the same amount of force on both carts. So whether one cart had more mass or one cart had less mass or one cart was not moving, both carts experienced the same amount of force when they interacted. So based on this, what can we conclude about the pair of forces between interacting objects? And the answer is answered by Newton's third law of motion. If one object exerts a force on a second object, then the second object exerts an equal force in the opposite direction back on the first object at the same time. So if you've ever heard the saying, for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction, this law is where that comes from. So if we take a look at our swimming example again, um, what is applying the force to accelerate the swimmer then? So I have a trick for this, and basically if you're able to identify the objects and a force from one of the objects, it's really easy to figure out where the other force is coming from. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, uh, object one and object two, uh, swimmer will be object one, and the swimmer is pushing on object two, which is the wall. Now my trick says just flip those two objects in the sentence, and so we can say that the wall pushes on the swimmer with equal force. And so again, the swimmer pushes on the wall, the wall pushes on the swimmer with equal force. So the wall is actually applying the force to the swimmer, causing the swimmer to accelerate. How about the desk slap example? So why did the two slaps feel differently? Well, let's take a look. We have object one, your hand pushes on object two, the desk, and in turn, the desk is pushing on your hand with equal force. And so at the same time you are slapping the desk, the desk technically is slapping you. So when you applied two different forces to the desk, one light and one firm, um, the desk applied the same amount of force back onto your hand in each instance. So the lighter slap that you gave to the desk really didn't feel too much because the desk was also applying a gentle force back to you with the same amount of force that you applied to it. So I have a couple of examples for you to try this out. Um, I will show the question, wait a few seconds, and then show the answer. So if you want to pause to give yourself more time to think, please feel free to do that. Now this one may seem a little strange, but we know that Earth is pulling on the moon and that's what keeps it in orbit. But the moon is also pulling on Earth with equal force in the opposite direction. And so that actually does affect Earth's position in space. And so if we run this animation, we can see that Earth isn't just in a fixed point in the center relative to the moon, it's actually shifting around a little bit because of that pull from the moon on the Earth. All right, how about this one? The Earth pulls on you with the force of gravity. What is the reaction to this force? And now this is one of the most missed questions in most physics classes. Uh, and so think about this. Think about the trick that we use when trying to figure out, uh, you know, the force that's happening uh, or the forces that are happening between the two objects. So we identify the two objects. We have Earth and you. And so we know Earth is pulling on you due to gravity. OK, so we just flip the objects around. You are pulling on Earth with equal force. And I know that seems really strange, but it is true. You are actually pulling on Earth with an equal force of gravity uh, as Earth is pulling on you. So how does this work? We can actually use Newton's first and second laws of motion to explain um, how these interactions are actually 
happening and making sense. So in the case of the Earth and you, the forces are equal. We've established that uh, you know the forces between two interacting objects are equal. The object exerts a force on a second object. The second object exerts the same amount of force back on the first object. And that's the same case here with Earth and you. The forces are equal, but the masses are very much different. So you can kind of see we showed this qualitatively with a very large M to represent the mass of Earth being huge. Um, and here's our force. And notice that force is equal in both of these boxes. So the force divided by Earth's mass results in a very, very, very tiny, almost negligible acceleration. Okay, we're talking so small it really has no discernible effect. Now, if we look at that same force over the mass of a person, we get an acceleration on the person, and that's essentially what's holding us to the Earth. All right, let's try this example. A gun shoots a bullet, which received the greatest force. And so let's watch this All clip right, real fast. That hammer. Here we go. Oh. Alrighty, so Newton's third law came into play there, and the gun was accelerated back towards the woman who was shooting it. Um, but the bullet also came out of the front of the gun in the opposite direction. Now, in this case, which received the greatest force? The bullet, the gun, uh, they both receive the same amount of force, or it depends on the size of the bullet? And the answer is, they each received an equal force. So we know the bullet accelerates very rapidly uh, and leaves the gun and goes a very long distance, whereas the gun, we can see, did accelerate back towards the shooter, um, but it didn't accelerate nearly as much as a bullet does. How, how does that work if they both receive equal force? And once again, we have to look at the masses of those two objects. So again, force is going to be equal but the masses are very much different. The bullet has a very low mass compared to the mass of the gun. Okay, and so because the mass of the gun is very high compared to the bullet, um, the force applied leads to a, a little bit of an acceleration. Okay, and yeah, we saw it accelerate, but it's nowhere near the acceleration that the bullet experienced. So same amount of force, but the bullet has a much lower mass. And so yes, the forces are still equal, but because of that, big difference in mass, we see a very big difference in accelerations. Here's a tricky one. A bug splatters on a windshield, which received the greatest force. The windshield, the bug, each received equal force, or does it depend on the size of the bug? Think about it for a second. And hopefully you realize at this point that they each received an equal force. And again, you might be thinking, well, wait a second, the car is just fine, the window's still there, uh, you'd only notice if you see the splatter, but the bug was obliterated. Why is that? And again, it goes back to the differences in mass. So equal force applied to both objects, but the mass of the car is much greater, and therefore the acceleration on the car due to that force is going to be minuscule compared to the acceleration that the bug experienced and it was definitely enough to obliterate the bug. All right, so looking at this force pair example, if a student pushes on the wall, standing on a skateboard, the wall will push on the student. Now these are equal forces acting in opposite directions. So I have a tricky question for you. Are these forces balanced? Now I want you to ask yourself, what makes forces balanced? Okay, so we know, okay, well, force is balanced. Net force on the object is zero. Um, they are equal in magnitude, acting against each other. So does that make these balanced? And the answer is no. And that's probably a little confusing right now, but I'm going to explain to you exactly why. And there's one major point that tells you why these are not balanced forces. So balanced forces do result in a net force of zero on the object. And that does not change velocity. But the biggest, biggest factor here is that the forces must act on the same object in order to consider them balanced. Okay, so force pairs are not balanced because they do not act on the same object. And so if you look at the diagram down here, we can see our forces, but they are on two different objects. 
All right, now you might be wondering why the wall doesn't move, and there are other forces due to other interactions. The wall isn't just interacting with the skateboarder, the wall's interacting with the ground and the structure, and so there are other things that are interacting with the wall that do balance the forces on the wall, but if we're simply looking at the force from the wall and the force from the skater, these force pairs, these are not considered balanced forces because they do not act on the same object. The force from the wall acts on the skateboarder. The force from the skateboarder acts on the wall. So while they may seem like they might balance, because they are on two separate objects, they do not balance because they do not cancel forces on the object. One final example for you here. So a volleyball player bumping a volleyball, what is one force between the two objects? And we can say the force of the player's wrist on the ball is one of the forces. So then the other force, if we just flip the sentence, would be the force of the ball on the player's wrist. And which object has more force acting on it? Neither. They are both exerting the same amount of force on each other. Alrighty, I hope this helped. If you have any additional questions, please make sure to get that extra help. Ask in class, send me an email, or come to office hours. Have a good one.